let's talk about the process of fibrin thread formation from fibrinogen and its stabilization you see this diagram here the breach in the endothelium has produced platelets plug formation and then there has been whole of the intrinsic or extrinsic cascade whatever has occurred here has led to formation of prothrombin activator the prothrombin that is present in the plasma when acted upon by prothrombin activator converts to thrombin and this is occurring at this site now this thrombin acts on the fibrinogen fibrinogen like prothrombin is a beta globulin this globulin has got these areas which are removed by the thrombin these protein amino acids and they are removed by the thrombin so that the fibrin monomers are formed actually this was the binding site of one fibrin molecule to the other fibrin molecule and it was covered by some amino acids and those amino acids when they are removed from the fibrinogen by the action of the thrombin enzyme now the fibrin monomers are present at this site and they in they have a tendency to come together and make a strand or a fiber so these fibrin molecules monomers are now making a fibrin polymer the other name for this polymer is fibrin fiber or fibrin strand the fibrin strand then is converted by the is it has got immediately it has got the cross bridges in between these strands and these cross bridges are hydrogen bondings and then the thrombin also activates factor 13 and this thrombin when it activates the factor 13 covalent bonding appears between these fibrin threads and this makes it a stable fibrin clot now let's talk about the clot retraction the clot that was formed by the fibrin uh, threads is a stable clot and now it is going to contract it is going to get smaller in size when it becomes smaller in size at one side you see the fibrin clot and the other side you see something yellowish colored fluid coming out this is the plasma minus the clotting factors whatever fibrin was present is now present in this clot whatever plasminogen was present has been converted to thrombin and is present in the plasma or in this clot platelets wbcs and other elements clotting factors which were used up here are present in the clot and the plasma that is devoid of these clotting factors and fibrinogen is called serum this is separated from the uh, clot now this smaller clot blood clot retracted clot has been formed by the help of platelets what do the platelets do for clot retraction they act upon the fibrin threads they secrete fibrin stabilizing factor that produces cross linking of the fibrin fibers the platelets are activated and they become adhesive and this adhesiveness of the platelets causes them to adhere to the fibrin fibers as well when the platelets are adhering to the fibrin fibers they are contracting and the contraction is because of thrombosthenin thrombosthenin are the contractile proteins present in the platelets and actin and myosin are also present in the platelets they are going to be affected by the presence of thrombin and by the calcium ions and under these the influence of thrombin and the calcium ions the contractile proteins of the platelets are causing platelet contraction when the platelets contract compression of the fibrin meshwork occurs and this causes serum to ooze out and a smaller clot to form from a bigger fibrin fibers that was it 
So now let's talk about the role of the platelets, the calcium and thrombin in clot retraction. पहले हमने डायग्राम में देख लिया. Initially the clot is a loose meshwork of fibrin threads and the entrapped platelets, RVCs and NWVCs. The thrombus, thenin and calcium that are present in the platelets, they cause contraction of the platelets and tighten the clot under effect of thrombin. The pale serum oozes out and the size of the clot decreases. This phenomena bridges the gap in the vessel wall. The platelets release platelet-derived growth factors which now help in the repair of the vessel wall. Now to the next topic for intravascular coagulation. We have been talking that the Pro-coagulant mechanisms and the anticoagulant mechanisms within the blood vessels are in balance and this keeps the blood flowing within the body. Now, what are those anticoagulant mechanisms? We need to know about that. Number one, anti-clotting role of endothelial cells by endothelial cell secretions and surface factor. So there are two type, two things in the endothelial cells. One are the secretions of the endothelial cells that have got anti-clotting role and other are the surface factors of the endothelial cells that have got anti-clotting role. Then there is anti-thrombin action of fibrin and anti-thrombin 3. Fibrin that has been formed during clot formation and anti-thrombin 3, which is an alpha globulin already present within the plasma, both of them have some anti-thrombin action. And then we'll be talking about the heparin that is present in the blood and we'll see what it does. Now coming to the anti-clotting roles of the endothelial cells and intact endothelial cells are a barrier between the blood and the subendothelial connective tissue. So when the endothelial cells are intact, the platelets are not coming in contact with the subendothelial tissue and this inhibits platelet activation and aggregation and clot formation. Apart from that, the tissue factor formation is inhibited because the blood cannot come in contact with the subendothelial connective tissue. Number two, the endothelial cells synthesizes prostacycline and nitric oxide and this inhibits platelet activation and aggregation. If you remember the platelet plug formation diagram in the primary hemostasis lecture, you can see that the intact endothelial cells on both sides of the clot forming area are producing prostacycline and nitric oxide. If you remember the diagram, you will remember Secretes tissue factor. So the endothelial cell, they when secrete tissue factor inhibitor, that is tissue factor, which was factor 3, when it's Inhibitor is secreted by the endothelial cell, the 7A factor that was in the extrinsic pathway stimulated by tissue factor. So when it is tissue factor inhibitor is produced by the endothelium, factor 7A cannot be stimulated and extrinsic pathway does not start in the blood vessels. It binds thrombin to thrombomodulin to activate protein C. So that Endothelial cell has got thrombomodulin that is again a protein and when it is on the, and on the surface of the epithelial cell. Because it is facing the blood. Ki taraf, blood vessel. Mein. So when the thrombomodulin is present in the endothelial cell surface and when thrombin is formed apart from other actions of the thrombin therefore the positive feedback affects on clotting that another action of thrombin is to bind to thrombomodulin. They become an enzyme which activates protein C. The protein C will join protein S and do something that we'll see later on. The endothelial cells also secrete tissue plasminogen activator to catalyze formation of plasmin for lysis of clot. Now, tissue plasminogen activator is in lectures. 
और पराजमिन क्या है और लाइसिस ऑफ क्लॉट क्या है ये बाद में लेक्चर में आना है उसे उसी वक्त समझेंगे इस वक्त आप एनलिस्ट कर रहे हैं पांच एक्शंस एंडोथेलियल सेल्स के इसमें आपका एमसीक्यू बन सकता है हम इसमें से किसी को भी उल्टा कर दें और चार को सीधा रखें एक को सीधा रखें और चार को उल्टा रखें आप अपोजिट स्टेटमेंट दे दें तो हमारा एम इस स्लाइड में से बन जाता है so as we said that we shall be discussing the activation of protein c by thrombomodulin we said it in the last slide that we'll do it later on so now we are here the endothelium has a surface protein called thrombomodulin this is the endothelial cell and this is the surface protein it binds thrombin that was formed in the clotting process to become an enzyme these two together become an enzyme and this enzyme stimulates protein c which is present in the plasma the protein c when it is activated or stimulated it inhibits factor 8a and factor 5a that are part of the intrinsic clotting cascade so this is a negative feedback mechanism provided by the endothelial cells by virtue of presence of thrombomodulin on its surface coming to the antithrombin action of fibrin and antithrombin 3 हमने जो एनुमरेट किए थे फैक्टर्स दैट वर एंटी क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स प्रेजेंट इन द ब्लड वन ऑफ देम वाज एंटी थ्रोम्बिन एक्शन ऑफ फिब्रिन एंड एंटी थ्रोम्बिन थ्री सो फिब्रिन थ्रेड्स दैट हैव बीन फॉर्म्ड बाय द एक्शन ऑफ थ्रोम्बिन ऑन द फाइब्रिनोजिन नाउ दे एड्सॉर्ब 85 टू 90 परसेंट ऑफ द थ्रोम्बिन एंड व्हेन द थ्रोम्बिन इज एड्सॉर्ब the positive feedback effects of thrombin on the clotting cascade cascade banta hai na clotting ka one after the other theek hai na us sara cascade jo hai usme intrinsic clotting mein us pe jo positive feedback effect tha thrombin ka that is prevented and thus the process of clotting is halted or blocked the other is antithrombin 3 it is an alpha globulin present in the plasma it it is synthesized in the liver it is present in the plasma and it binds the rest of the thrombin and inactivates it in next 12 to 20 minutes so when the thrombin is formed it is causing at one side it is causing fibrin fibers fibrinogen to convert into fibrin fibers and then stabilization of the fibrin clot and at the same time whatever is released into the circulation is caught by antithrombin 3 and inactivated within 12 to 20 minutes and whatever was present at the original site the fibrin fibers absorb it so that extensive clotting does not occur and the process is stopped as a negative feedback process पॉजिटिव फीडबैक हम पढ़ चुके हैं नेगेटिव फीडबैक वाला जो हमारा मैकेनिज्म है वो इस पॉजिटिव फीडबैक को फिर आखिरकार ब्रेक लगा देता है कमिंग टू हेपरिन हेपरिन इज अ हाईली नेगेटिवली चार्ज कॉन्जुकेटेड पॉलीसेकेराइड अब हेपरिन आपका आ गया हमने उसके बारे में आपको यहाँ पांच पॉइंट दिए हैं हो सकता है हम उसमें एक पॉइंट जो है वो पॉलीसेकेराइड वाला उसकी जगह कॉन्जुगेटेड प्रोटीन और कोई और चीजें लगाने शुरू कर दें इसके ऊपर भी हमारा एमसीक्यू बन सकता है ठीक है सो व्हाट इज द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ दिस हेपरिन मॉलिक्यूल इट इज अ पॉलीसेकेराइड इट इज कॉन्जुगेटेड विद अदर सब्सटेंसेज एंड इट हैज गोट अई नेगेटिव चार्ज ओवर इट वेन इट कम्बाइन विद एंटी थ्रोम्बिन थ्री दिस एनहांसिस द अफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ एंटी थ्रोम्बिन थ्री By 100 to 1000 हाँ जी क्या करता था एंटीथ्रोम्बिन थ्री लास्ट लाइड में यू सॉ दैट एंटीथ्रोम्बिन थ्री अटैच टू थ्रोम्बिन एंड डिस्ट्रॉयज इट सो वंस क्लॉटिंग हैज स्टार्टेड देर शुड बी सम पॉइंट एट विच इट शुड बी स्टॉप्ड एंड फॉर दैट द हैपरिन कम्स टू इन टू एक्शन इट कंपाइन विद एंटीथ्रोम्बिन थ्री एंड 
enhances the effectiveness of antithrombin 3. Actually, heparin खुद से कुछ नहीं कर रहा है वो antithrombin 3 के काम को एनहांस कर रहा है ठीक है इट रिमूव द फैक्टर ट्वेल्व नाइन टेन एंड अलेवन फ्रॉम प्लाज्मा तो इतना बड़ा पॉलिसेकराइड है हाईली नेगेटिवली चार्ज है तो जो एक्टिवेटेड फैक्टर बने थे ट्वेल्व अलेवन नाइन एंड टेन इट रिमूव दम फ्रॉम द प्लाज्मा बाय एडजॉर्बिंग नंबर फोर द हेपरिन इज सिक्रेटेड बाय द बेजोफिल सेल्स ऑफ द ब्लड एंड मास सेल्स इन द पेरी कैपिलरी कनेक्टिव टिश्यू तो ये कहा से आई है या तो ब्लड के अपने बेजोफिल सेल्स इसको सिक्रेट करते हैं या फिर जो कनेक्टिव टिश्यू जो कैपिलरी के इर्द गिर्द थी उसके साथ जो चिपके हुए मास्ट सेल्स हैं वो इसको सिक्रेट करते हैं तो जब कनेक्टिव टिश्यू एक्सपोज हुई तो न सिर्फ ये कि क्लॉटिंग फिनोमिना जो था वो बनना शुरू हुआ बल्कि ये कि हेपरिन भी आहिस्ता आहिस्ता मास्ट सेल्स में से रिलीज होकर प्लाज्मा में आनी शुरू हो गई द हेपरिन प्रोड्यूसिंग मास सेल्स आर फाउंड मोस्ट एबेंटली इन लिवर एंड द लंग्स क्यों क्योंकि वहां पर लिवर में इस पोर्टल वेन में से स्लगिश ब्लड फ्लो आ रहा होता है और उसमें क्लॉट्स बन रहे होते हैं जो लंग्स हैं उनमें डीप वेन्स में से ब्लड फ्लो आ रहा होता है और उसमें क्लॉट्स बन रहे होते हैं तो जो छोटे छोटे क्लॉट ब्लड वेसल के अंदर बन रहे हैं बिकॉज ऑफ स्लगिश ब्लड फ्लो तो वो जो है वो उसको हेपरिन रिमूव करती है ठीक है ब्लड क्लॉट्स को रिमूव करती है और उसके जरिए वो इनकी लिवर के अंदर इन्फेक्शन नहीं होने देती क्योंकि ब्लड क्लॉट्स माइक्रोवेसल्स को ब्लॉक कर देंगे और लिवर खराब हो जाएगा इसी तरह लंग्स के अंदर इन्फेक्शन नहीं होने देती क्योंकि ब्लड क्लॉट्स जब बारीक कैपिलरीज तक जाएंगे तो वहां जाकर वो फंस जाएंगे और उसकी वजह से जो क्लॉट है वो इन्फेक्शन कर देगा लंग्स की इन दोनों कामों को हैपरिन नहीं होने देगी एट दिस स्टेज आई वुड लाइक टू मैंशन द स्मूथनेस ऑफ द एंडोथेलियल सेल्स अलाउ अ लेमिनर ब्लड फ्लो एट अ स्टेबल वेलोसिटी एंड यू नो वट अ लेमिनर ब्लड फ्लो इज फ्रॉम योर नॉलेज ऑफ फिजिक्स सो वेन द ब्लड वेसल्स एंडोथेलियम इज स्मूथ द ब्लड फ्लोज इन अ लेमिनर फ्लो मैनर and the rbcs are in the center and uh, this they slip over the wbcs and the plasma proteins and go fastest they are the second layer is of wbcs the third layer is of platelets the fourth layer is of plasma proteins so all of them are, go, are going smoothly and none of them are bombarding the endothelium and damaging the endothelium so against laminar blood flow the opposite is turbulent blood flow and when the turbulent blood flow where it is present it comes after a constriction in the blood vessel which is daba rahi hai jaise main mez par kursi par baithi hu to jo kursi ka kinara hai lakdi ka wo meri leg veins ko daba raha hai theek hai turbulent blood flow would come after a constriction at the blood vessel or a sharp bend in the blood vessel there is a chance of damage to the endothelial cell by turbulent blood flow and this can initiate the clotting process opposing the idea of having turbulent blood flow is the idea of stasis or sluggish blood flow when something is pressing upon my blood vessel from outside for example as seen in the veins of the bedridden patients this produces stasis of blood flow sluggishness of blood flow and it causes local hypoxia there is local hypoxia because the blood is staying at the same place and not going back to the heart and losing its oxygen and also the clotting factors are being collected at the that place in the blood and they can be activated by hypoxia and clotting can occur so coming to the fibrinolytic system the same endothelial cell thrombomodulin complex that activated protein c the activated protein c along with protein s that is present in the plasma they join together and they cause plasminogen activators 
टू बी एक्टिवेटेड अब इसमें आप ये बात याद रखें सारी बुक्स में नहीं लिखा हुआ बट स्टिल आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट टिश्यू प्लाज्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर्स आर प्रेजेंट इन द ब्लड बट आर सिक्रेटेड बाय द एंडोथेलियल सेल्स इनटू द ब्लड बट दे आर कैप्ड इनहिबिटेड बाय टिश्यू प्लाज्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर इनहिबिटर so when this protein c and protein s come they disinhibit the plasminogen activators and then they come and convert the plasminogen that is a plasma protein a beta globulin present in the plasma into plasmin plasmin is an active enzyme proteolytic enzyme that converts fibrin into soluble fibrin fragments under the surveillance of plasminogen activator again this plasmin digest the fibrin and the path is cleared for the blood to go through the repaired vessel so a brief review of the fact that the same clot which was formed by activation of the intrinsic pathway produced thrombin and the same thrombin by acting with the thrombomodulin activated plasmin plasminogen activator now the plasminogen activator formed plasmin so at one side the hegman factor 12 when activated produces thrombin which causes clot formation by a fast track the same thrombin also activates plasmin enzyme from the plasminogen through a fast track and after that what happens the activity of the plasmin is a, it is a slow proteolytic enzyme so the clot which was formed very fast now will be acted upon by a slow proteolytic enzyme that is called plasmin and it will cause dissolution of the clot very slowly and by that time the breach has been covered by the fibrous tissue and by the reepithelialization by the endothelial cells in the blood vessel and the blood vessel is clean for the blood to flow through it after dissolution of the clot so this dissolution of the clot is now going to inhibit further clot formation you see the clotting factors and the anti clotting factors both are present clotting factors first help the blood vessels to stop the bleeding from a cut end and to clot to form and then the same clotting factors help the blood vessels to clear the clot from within and to help in the smooth blood flow that was all for today allah hafiz